Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the fantasy football counselor. We are continuing on with the Impact Series for Fantasy Football 2020. Mega episode here today with the two goats, guys, the greatest of all time, 49er YouTubers, nothing but Niners. We are talking about Debo Samuel, Fantasy Football Value 2020. I want to introduce you to these guys. They've been crushing it on YouTube. Mike below, Nick here. They're on the screen. What's going on, guys? Yeah, what's going on, guys? I'm, I'm excited to talk about uh, some Debo Samuel here and uh, anything fantasy football really related. And I uh, just can't wait to get to it, man. So that's Mike and Nick. What's happening, man? What's going on, everyone? What's going on, Faithful? Yeah, you know, just ready to talk some Niner football, man. Talk about Debo Samuel today. Uh, you know, we'll dig into more players as, as the year goes along. But, you know, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button as well for uh, – you know, Joe over there. And uh, if you guys like us as well, give us a shout on YouTube as well. Nothing but Niners. Yeah, guys, I put a link to their YouTube channel below. Now, the advantage to bringing these guys on is they they know a lot more than I do for that specific team, right? Where focus goes, energy flows, right? So they, they're honed in, they're focused right on the 49ers. That's what, I, that's what you guys are getting, right? You're getting that direct advice there. So uh, let's focus on Debo Samuel. Again, I want to bring you guys on, te- like I said, tease the audience. We got to talk about Monster. We got to bring you back, talk about Jimmy Garoppolo, Kittle. There's so much to talk about in regards to fantasy relevant because I, I think they're a really fantasy relevant team going to 2020. Now, there's a ton of depth at wide receiver. And I keep telling people, do not draft a wide receiver in the first couple rounds go robust rb because you're gonna get a lot of value and you know i've seen it year in year out the mainstream the what i call the can sheeps is guys if you guys aren't familiar with my term mike and nick and anyone listening the can sheeps is is the mainstream analyst they come up with the copy and paste ranking so everyone that finished on top last year in the rankings they say okay guys draft them again or they'll just pick a name that's popular like odell they told you three years in a row odell draft them in the first round three years in a row odell busted i don't care if he got injured he busted that's the bottom line there's no fantasy points there so this year i'm saying wait on a wide receiver and one of the guys i want to grab in all my drafts is debo samuel but i also want to address the concern those concern those concerns are volume 81 targets 51 receptions only three touchdowns so i'm going to start off with this first question i got a lot of questions about debo um is the volume going to go up? I know it's a general question, but if someone can one of you guys answer, are we going to see more volume out of Debo Samuel? You know, it really, it really depends this year because obviously, you know, the Niners are, are, are being put as to take a uh, wide receiver at that 13th overall p- position this year. And you also have likes of, you know, Trent Taylor coming back next year, Jalen Hurd coming back next year. Now Jalen Hurd is very similar to what Debo brings to the table, right? So you're going to look at the, you're going to look at the production that you get from if Jalen Hurd is healthy from that back injury that he's had last year, uh, comes back into that lineup. He can do those end around, those sweeps arounds, you know, those outside run zones that, that uh, Kyle Shanahan utilized Debo last year. Debo, you know, last year uh, was, a, was a killer rush in the football. I mean, he was averaging, you know, close to 12 yards at attempt. Um, just big numbers with rushing yards. Uh, you stated, you know, three – uh, touchdowns receiving. He also had three with rushing. So um, do I see his his value going down a little bit in that? It really depends, uh, I think, mostly on what Jalen Hurd is going to bring to the table as health-wise. If he is back with the Niners uh, completely healthy, I think you see a production drop in those type of things uh, with Debo Samuel. Okay, so I got to ask you this too. Is Jimmy G the guy that'll, like Big Ben, right? Targeted A.B. a lot. He had about 168 targets to Antonio Brown 2018. Big Ben, that's, is Jimmy G the guy that, like, he's at Brady where he spreads the ball a lot? I mean, that's what we've kind of seen. Is that going to continue? Or do you see him honing in? That's my guy. He's going to eat this year. Is that going to happen or more of a ball spreading ground? Mike, it looks like you got an answer. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting that you asked that question. Shanahan, by default, has his offenses designed to spread the ball around. But in a pinch, Jimmy has his guys that he's going to go to. And this year, I do expect those guys to be the George Kittle and Debo Samuel on the receiving side of it. Uh, they built up a lot of repertoire together. Uh, they, they really worked on their chemistry. And Debo will become that guy in, in pinch situations for Jimmy Garoppolo this season. Absolutely. Right. Going into the season, I remember everyone was laughing at me because everyone was on the Pettis train. I think I talked to you guys off camera about this. 
I watched their social media, okay? And again, Pettis was in there posing, look at me, GQ, with the eyebrow raise. Okay, I don't think he had his eyebrow raise, but he was in there kind of like, I made it, I, I'm Pettis, I'm the real deal. And then I saw Debo's video, he's out there grinding. Like, it honestly looked like a montage with Rocky in Rocky Three, where Rocky's getting kisses from the girls and he's smiling. And then Mr. T's out there doing, that's what it looked like when I'm watching the two contrasts in social media. So my question is, is Debo, well, we know the work ethic is there and I'm not gonna even question that, but is he ultra elite? Would he put him up there with the top receivers? Is he like a Galladay or is he like a, and I want to say Antonio Brown is kind of a high ceiling, but is he an ultra elite guy? You've got your par guys, your average guys. Where do you put him? And then you've got your ultra high guys like your Julio Jones. Where does he fall in, please? Can you guys kind of describe his talent? I mean, I would go from last year, just watching him play last year, I would put him right now at above average, right? And the reason I would put him above average is because of the possibilities that you can use him in. You can use him in the run game. You can use him in the pass game. You can use him in slants. He can run the route tree. Um, he is that guy who's going to catch the football, but when he catches the football, he is a physical receiver, right? right? So he's not just going to go down. You need to tackle him. So I would put him up there with those guys, um, not so much Antonio Browns or uh, Michael Thomases or, or those type of guys. Um, but producing wise, if the football's thrown to him, he's going to produce. And in that Kyle Shanahan system, he's utilized more than just as a receiver. Um, you know, he's a physical receiver. He's got great hands. He's got half decent speed. Um, it's not as fast as people think, but he's also not as slow as people think. Um, so in, in my eyes, I think that he, I would put in probably, you know, it was his rookie year last year, 802 yards in a rookie year, three touchdowns, three, uh, receiving three, um, three on rushing. So, you know, that's six touchdowns in a rookie year, uh, and utilized all over the field. And he had just under a thousand uh, all purpose yards or scrimmage yards as a rookie. So uh, he's definitely going to be utilized more in this offense. Um, but it also depends on the factors of what they bring in and what get healthy as well. But I'd put him above average. Why only three touchdowns? I'm looking at Jimmy G 27 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Why only three to him? Was it just because they just get distributed to other people? Why only three to him? Is there any reasoning? Yeah. Why so low? Yeah. Absolutely. So you have to remember that this Shanahan offense is really complex and people don't come in here and just shine right away. And so it took him a while to get started. And he ended up finishing the season averaging just under three and a half receptions a game. So for you guys who are out there and you're doing PPR, that's going to be a big deal to you. Right. But I do see him being a guy that can uptick that number of receptions. He can get his four five catches a game this year easily it's about the play design and what what they're going to do with them so i do expect his his receptions to increase uh his receptions to increase but i'm not sure about the play designs and how shanahan is going to use them that goes back to what nick was saying um he, they were spreading the ball around a lot they didn't really have their true red zone threat guys were in and out and injuries you guys got to remember that the niners traded for emmanuel sanders in the middle of the season and then that's when you started to see Debo Samuels flourish, right? Well, now he's got that confidence. He's got the training from the savvy vet, and he is gone. So now those receptions have to be distributed around, even if someone else comes back, like what we were talking about earlier. So I, I talked to Walter Football. He's, uh, he does the draft. He's got his opinion. He focuses on the draft, the NFL draft. Um, who are, so I could get an answer from him, but I wanted to hear from you guys direct. Who are they looking to target in their first pick in the NFL draft? You say they're going to target a wide receiver, you think? Um, most people have them as pulling a wide receiver at 13. I'm not completely sold on it yet. Um, and that, you know, that's my, bi like my biased opinion is that you're getting a Trent Taylor back. You're getting a Jalen Hurd back. A good one is coming back. Whether he's on this team or not yet is to, still to be determined. Um, but as of right now, he's on that. Kendrick Bourne just signed a two-year tender or a one-year tender. Um, so he's coming back. Um, you got all these guys that are coming back that you look to be and flourish in this offense. And all of a sudden we trade the DeForest Buckner and people are saying, well, you don't trade a DeForest Buckner to not pick a top notch receiver in this draft at number 13. Right. But when you look at Kyle Shanahan, when I look at Kyle Shanahan, I see a guy who is an offensive genius who gets people open and schemes people open and really likes those yard after catch guys. But if you look at this receiver depth in this draft this year, there's three rounds that you can, you know, there's 26 guys that are, are rated from a one round tender to a third round pick. So you can get them all over the place. 
Um, I'm still not sold that they go 13. I think they can still pick up a receiver at 31, but that's my opinion. Well, let me just jump in on top of that really quick. Uh, those three names that Nick named right off the bat, he said uh, Trent Taylor, Jalen Hurd, and Marquise Goodwin. Those three guys are the exact reason I think the Niners are going to take a wide receiver in the first round because all three of them have one thing in common. They are never on the field. That's the one thing that they have in common. Uh, and Kendrick Bourne is a guy that if the Niners had a lot of faith in him, I think he would have gotten an extension instead of just a one-year tender. They're looking for somebody to come in there that they can count on. And every year they have drafted at least one wide receiver. This year they've got the ammo to do it with this bonus pick from DeForest Buckner that Nick mentioned. I think this is the time you do it. This is an elite group of three wide, uh, wide receivers right there at the top. And if one of them falls to them, I think they take them. Right. Now I'm talking to like diehard 49ers fans. So I always tell the guys, the influencers I, I'm on the phone with or interviewing right here, don't ever get offended if I talk crap about your team. So would this be a fair statement? Uh, this is what I think. And again, for a fantasy perspective, so my mind is kind of geared towards fantasy, right? You guys don't have a superstar. That's just how I feel. I feel that you guys have above average players all coming together. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I mean, I would I would say that that is it. That is an honest statement, right? To be honest with you, and it and really, it's the offense that is ran here too. That we don't. I mean, we could say George Kittle is a star, right? In there you go. Offense. Yeah, yeah, he's a star. Yeah, you know, obviously, but he is a star, and and anybody in this league would would kill to have a George Kittle on their team, right? Um, just because of what he brings to the table. But it, as it goes for receivers or running backs, uh, the other skill positions, there is no star. And in this type of offense, you see three different running backs being used per game. You see uh, wide receivers, uh, you know, I think the most catches that a receiver had this year was like Emmanuel Sanders with like 10 in one game. Other than that, there's seven receivers that are throwing the ball to in a football game. And I think that's because of the fact that this offense doesn't allow people to shine. It goes with the system of what they're facing on the defensive side, and then they get guys open and they go from there. And I think some of these guys, I think a Debo Samuel could be that type of guy later down the road, but he's not yet. He's a rookie. And as of right now, I don't think we have that. I'm yeah, going to. So, sorry, go ahead, Mike. I want to agree with Joe there as the fact that we don't have a superstar yet. I think Debo was on the precipice of becoming that. And I think that uh, what, to what Nick was saying, if we had those dogs in there, then we would see them shine more. And so right now we're weeding them all out. This guy is okay, but he's not that guy. Right now, in that position, you go and you get your dog. And that's why I think it's really important. And it's going to affect the, the value of Debo Samuel in the, uh, in the fantasy world, for sure. So as of right now, everybody listening, I consider Debo a fantasy football sleeper with some upside. But as you're hearing and how I feel, it's more of a team that will spread the ball around. I don't feel secure honing in on one guy and getting top maximum superstar production. Kittle could be a guy that could get something – could have that upside. Uh, but again, I don't want to go into running backs here too much, but I got to touch on this. Why is it? And again, I, I'm going to go off on a quick side tangent here. I remember when Sony Michelle got drafted, I was excited about him coming in as a rookie, wherever he landed. I'm like, yes, Sony. When he landed on the Patriots, I'm like, no, Sony, no. Career went to the grave, right? Like, do you feel that Debo Samuel, obviously, maybe could be hindered a little bit from reaching his ceiling because he's on the 49ers? Um, oh man, that's a really good question. It's, it's yes and no. The reason I'm going to say, let me start with the no first. Shanahan is, is excellent at finding what the strengths are of his players and utilizing them. The flip side is that he likes to spread the ball around and keep offensive guess, guessing, a uh, defense is guessing. And so if you are keeping these guys when they're told by moving the ball around all over the place, uh, down in and down out, play in and play out, every game seems to be a different superstar out there, right? It keeps those defenses honest, and he doesn't want you to hone in on them. Um, but I do think that Shanahan saw something in Samuel that other people didn't, and that's why he drafted him where he did. And I do think that this is going to be the guy in this system, whether he's wide receiver for one or not, for at least the next seven years. I think that they, he's going to see the end of his contract and they're going to extend him at least one time. So I think he's the guy here. Here's another question for you. A lot of guys came in as rookies or their second year. They're young guys. Terry McLaren, A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel. Who else is there? I'm thinking here. I'm, I'm forgetting the names here. There's so many people here. E.K. Metcalf. Metcalf is another guy. Um, who else is there? Um, who's the other guy on Jacksonville? Shark, he's pretty young. Out of all these guys, and this is a tough question to answer, and you've got to try to take the bias out of them. 
I'm going to say Debo, maybe A.J. Brown. They all have upside. Depends on who's throwing the ball, right? Because I really feel quarterbacks help make wide receivers as good as they, they are. Out of all of them, and again, I'm not saying this because you guys are on here, hands-wise, strength-wise, talent-wise, work ethic, I think Debo is the best out of these guys. But again, my concern is, again, the quarterback spreading the ball. Do you think he is the most talented out of all these young, amazing potential superstars? I, I would – let's see. Let me take it back this way. I'm not going to go and say the most talented, right? Because talent is something that you just adore. Like you endure it. So like you're born with talent, right? And you just build on that ability and that talent ability. Um, but I will say that he's probably the most dynamic on okay. the team as That's in different. what he can and can't do. Right. So I think he's more dynamic because what he can do with the football in his hands as in whether he's rushing or receiving, his physicality that he has, which could also as a receiver hurt you later in your career, um, but that is something that Debo has always brought to the table is that physicality. Um, you know, last year he played at a little bit of a heavier weight than he, that he's trying to get down to now. I think he's trying to get down to like 210-ish right now. I believe he played at like 220 or 221. Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that uh, when you go to talk, but um, – you know, I wouldn't say that he's the most talented guy on this team as in receiver because I think there's guys on this team that have better hands than him. Um, but I also think that there's there's nobody that is as well-rounded as he is, and whether that's to be able to catch the football, the yards after the catch. And we're talking about the receiver position on this team. So uh, the yards after catch, the ability to go up and get the football, to stay focused on the football, so those contested catches, and also what he can do with the ball in his hand during rushing and using the, the football and using the whole field uh, as his, his vision. So I would say that he's more dynamic. I wouldn't say that he's the best athlete. And when it comes to all those guys that you named, um, I, there's only one of those guys I would take over Debo right now after watching all their rookie seasons, and that's Terry McLaurin. Uh, he did it despite who was throwing the ball over there in right. Washington. Um, so I really do like him, and I think he's got a ton of potential. Um, I think he's probably one of the more talented – wide receivers what makes Debo different and why he had he might have a little bit more value is that they don't just run him as a wide receiver they do the handoffs and talks to him and that's something that you're not going to see McLaurin doing as much of as you will Debo so he has a higher value in fantasy so to speak because of that um, and then Debo to your question he was playing around 215 and you're right though he is trying to get down to 210 this year all right I won't keep you guys any any much lo any longer here but I do want to talk about one more thing it's a concern to me, and I don't know if we kind of touched upon it and you kind of did maybe, but Jimmy Garoppolo, going back to him again, I'm looking at him compared to other quarterbacks, and when I look at wide receivers, I look at how many times that quarterback threw the ball, right? I look at attempts. Now, he was 19th in attempts here with 476. Again, you kind of answered it. They spread the ball around. They run it. They keep defenses, like, on their toes. Do we see more production? Is he going to throw the ball more this year, Jimmy G? Is that something the 49ers might start implementing? throwing it more. I want to see more volume out. Yeah, um, absolutely. Every quarterback that Shanahan has, after their first full season in his system, they take off like a rocket. You guys remember when Matt Ryan had his MVP season, right? That 2016 right. season, right? That was his second year in Shanahan's system. Uh, he did it with Schaub. He did it with Brian Hoyer in, in, uh, in, in Cleveland. Like, he's done it with guys. Once they got some time in the system, they take off and they elevate. The, the other thing that people have to remember, though, when it comes to Jimmy Garoppolo's numbers, he's going to complete a higher percentage of passes. He'll throw more touchdown passes. Uh, but you have to remember that the Niners had a top three rushing attack last year. When your run game is as good as it is and you're averaging over six yards a carry, it's going to be hard to sit here and say, all right, let's start throwing the ball around the yard 30, 40 times a game. So you have to keep that in mind with it. Uh, the good thing is, some of these running backs are going away now. Matt Breida is returning. I guess he still technically hasn't signed yet, and we'll get to that in another episode. But it's, it's something to keep in the back of your mind is how good the run game was for this 49ers team this year. That causes them to not have to throw the ball out. We saw it in the Minnesota Vikings game in the playoffs. What did he have, like eight attempts, right? It was something low like that. Never, I've never seen anything like that before. Okay, I got one more question here, and I, get, I appreciate you guys coming on. We'll get you on more. Last question here, and again, it has to do with Jimmy Garoppolo because I think, again, that reflects what the situation is going to be for all 49ers quarter, uh, wide receivers moving forward, and that is Jimmy Garoppolo, okay? Like, there, I have a saying, it's called, years to wow me, and I'm not wowed. 
Uh, Ryan Tannehill, when he was on the Dolphins, just never been that top-tier quarterback. Other guys, Andy Dalton's of the world. Derek Carr sucks. Uh, you know, I know you guys might not like Derek Carr either, but uh, due to the rivalry, whatever. But, um, yeah, again, Derek Carr. I mean, they just, these teams just buy into these guys. Is Garoppolo going to stay, like, just above par, kind of that guy? Or do you see this guy accelerating into the upper echelon tier, the, the Russell Wilsons, the Tom Brady's of the world. Does he have that potential? Does he have that ceiling? Or do you always see him, him being a Darnold, a Dalton, a average guy, a Derek Carr, for example? I, I don't want him to get stuck there. Does he have the ceiling? Can he rise? Like you said, you kind of said he might, right? With Shanahan. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Mike, as in, you know, we haven't really seen a whole lot of Jimmy Garoppolo, right? As in quarterbacking. Um, you know with his dropbacks and his deep balls and, you know, the outside number throws and things like that. Um, but when you look at his smarts and the way that he plays football at times, he, you got to remember this guy only played one full season, right? So yeah, he backed up Tom Brady in new England. Um, he played four games in new England. He came over as a niner. He played five games, won those five games when we were, Oh, a one in nine team, right? We finish out the season with five extra wins. We, we go out that season with six wins. Now, a lot of that had to do with Jimmy Garoppolo and the way that he controls this offense. Um, but it, it's kind of, I don't want to say that he's going to be stuck there. I think that he's going to take that next step and that next tier. And it may be, you know, not one tier above, but it may be four tiers above of what he was this year. But like Mike said, it really depends on the run game. Uh, we were averaging 6.7 yards a rush, over 230 yards a game. Uh, pretty much for the whole season. Uh, obviously, until George Kittle went down, we lost a little bit in the run game. Our Kyle Juszczyk, our fullback, went down. We lost a little bit in the run game. And it went, But you've seen those traits out of Jimmy. When he needed to throw the football, and I know analysts all over the world were saying that Jimmy's not that guy, right? And he can't get it done. Well, I've seen him go live, head-to-head -head with Drew Brees at the Superdome and win that football game, right? And there were – deep passes, short passes, cross passes, slants, whatever it was. Um, but I see Jimmy Garoppolo taking that extra tier, and, it, and it's for reasons like Mike said. This is, good. this is year three for Jimmy Garoppolo, right, technically. But it's really year two as a full season because the first year he only played five games. The second year he had an ACL after playing three games. This year he went all the way to a Super Bowl. And if you don't think a guy can extend or – uh, get better on that situation, uh, taking a team to a Super Bowl with a bunch of average wide receivers, to say the least. Um, there, you got to look up at it. You got to look up at it. I, I do believe that this second year in Kyle Shanahan's system is going to project him to be an even better quarterback this year. But, he, but he's under the radar. When I look at him, I don't think sensational. I mean, you see Lamar Jackson, bam, I know he's elite. I see Pat Mahomes, bam, I see elite. I see Jimmy Garoppolo, I'm like, ah, like, you know what I mean? He doesn't give me that pop But factor, you, you got to look, look at the difference between the there, – there are three different types of quarterbacks too, right? So Patrick Mahomes is a guy that's going to throw you for high yards because he's in an in a Andy Reid system, right? And that's what they do. They throw the football. You got to look at Lamar Jackson. They have a run game, plus he's a running quarterback. He doesn't throw as much as people think. He may get a yard, you know, 200 yards or 250 a game, but he also – you Lamar Jackson made his name by being explosive in both areas of the game, right? right? Running, he gets you points. In fantasy football league, running, he gets you points. Throwing, he gets you points. Then you look at a Jimmy Garoppolo. He's in a system where they have a good running game. No matter if it's an undrafted back or a star running back, they're going to have a good running game. And – Kyle Shanahan's offense is to spread the football around, attack the middle of the field, get guys open. So he doesn't look there. You get those 10 yard throws, but those 10 yard throws are now 25 yard gains. So in this system. So while Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't look like, I mean, the guy threw for over 4,000 yards and over 25 touchdowns. Right. That's more than average in the NFL. Right. He's just not as flashy. Maybe that's what it is. And it's not, it's not as fantasy relevant, but hopefully he takes a step up this upcoming season. I'm excited, man. It's like a chess match and you guys have some great weapons and you guys work together good, especially defensively. That's a whole other topic that us fantasy guys don't really talk about, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, he answered a lot of questions, guys. Fantasy football sleeper, Debo Samuel, 2020. Make sure you guys target him mid to late rounds. And again, guys, we don't really see 
where his average draft position for fantasy is until after the NFL draft and people start mock drafting. We get a feel. But I really think a lot of people will sleep on him. And I think he's going to be a solid wide receiver, maybe two, three on your team, maybe a flex play, maybe going to have some boom weeks for daily fantasy. And that's pretty much it, guys. I don't want to exhaust you too much. We can sit here all day and talk about the entire team, but we're going to save that for another episode. So, guys, can you guys shout out for the people listening in the car how to, how to find you guys, please? So you can get at me on Twitter. Uh, again, this is Mike. My Twitter handle is 49ersMike underscore NFL. That is the best way to reach me personally. Uh, and then uh, if you guys want to check us out on our uh, personal website, it is www.nothingbutniners.com. That's spelled all the way out. Okay, I appreciate it, guys. There's a link here below to their YouTube channel. That's where I discovered them. And, uh, man, they're crushing it out there. Guys, thanks for being here. Debo, Samuel, what a stud. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what happens in 2020. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you, Joe. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And, guys, leave a thumbs up and a comment. Are you drafting Debo, Samuel? We are out. Thank you.